Hey everybody, welcome to the workshop. This episode is called theming. I'm going to give you an inside look at what's going on up here when I decide I'm going to make a guitar for someone or I get a call from someone that says, hey, make me a guitar. We're going to go through the process of how I make guitars unique. Now, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. First off, at the end of the movie, at the end of the video, there is an email address for me. You want to talk to me, send me that. I don't do product endorsements and things like that. So if you've got a question about what I'm using, just drop me an email and I'll send it that way. Uh, next in the center is a round emblem. Click on that. It subscribes you to my channel. You get noticed when something comes out. Then you'll see my playlist typically over here and a suggested video over here. Now, Google has some algorithm that figures out based on your viewing history. I hope it's not that kind of movie, but they figure out from what you typically watch, which one of my movies you're going to like best. And finally, last thing about housekeeping, as always, the fashion rundown. Today, I'm sporting the Robert Reynolds starter kit look, complete with a long sleeve red t-shirt, and of course, the signature Popcorn Sutton Liberty Green Stripe Bibs. Shout out to you, Robert Reynolds. Now, y'all remember some of these. Some are very colorful. They look like they come out of a straight out of a yard sale or a junkyard. There's gig posters, there's postcards, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. We're going to dig through my collection of scraps and I'm going to show you how I did some of these, where some of the ideas came from. And then I've got this one here. Uh, it's been being worked on in my last couple videos. It's uh, been ordered by somebody from Australia. This episode, we're going to go through uh, this guitar, how I put the different things on it, piece it together, and you're going to see a theme come together. Uh, I will mail it to Australia. We'll let uh, John get the guitar uh, and figure out how he likes it. You know he's going to love it, wouldn't you? But anyway, once he's got it, he won't know what this looks like until he opens it. Once I know that that's happened, then we'll release the video. So I got to get to work here. Let's hit the workbench. Now, if you contact me to build a guitar for you, I'm going to have some basic questions. I'm going to develop your preferences like, do you like black or do you like chrome? What's your favorite color Camacho box? There's mine right there. Then there's going to be like plain wood or you like a painted neck. Or you like a combination of wood and paint. Then it's going to be no matchbooks on the neck or matchbooks on the neck. Now, when it comes to the graphics that are on the guitar, if you're an artist that I decide to troll down, you're pretty easy to figure out. I, I just got one of your gig posters here, and then I kind of make something like this, and you yeah, check that out, and we're good to go. But if I'm making one for you, and I'm making the decisions, I just need some information. It might be, what was your favorite toy? An erector set? Hey, what's your favorite place? You like airplanes? What, do you believe in love? How about the occult? Maybe it's your profession. Hey, that third one right there looks pretty good, Bob. Maybe you're a surfer. Maybe you want something surfing. Maybe you like Texas. Maybe you're a member of a yacht club. Maybe you like Christmas. Maybe you like Jesus. Somebody just tell me something, would ya? Maybe you're inspired by that postcard of of a two-story outhouse at my grandfather's beer joint. Maybe you got West Virginia postcards signed by the one and only Jessica White. Yeah, look at that, two of them. Maybe your redneck cell phone is your inspiration. Maybe you're inspired by rat traps so much that you wanna make a guitar out of one. Check that out. Anyway, there's a million things you can do. I just need to know what you like and I will take it from there. Now, a couple things are going to come with one of my guitars guaranteed. Tammy is going to sign every one of my guitars. If you don't like that, well, then I don't like you. There's going to be a greaser on your guitar somewhere. Why? Just in case your playing gets rusty. If you don't have this or this, then it's not real. You're going to be embarrassed on the Antiques Roadshow at some point in the future with a fraudulent guitar. And then finally, I'm going to work some kind of coin into it somewhere. 
Back to the guitar on the bench. Let's go through the questions I typically ask someone I'm building a guitar for. First one is chrome or black? John picked chrome. So we've got a chrome trim pickup. We've got a chrome everything else. Chrome jacks, chrome tailpiece cover, chrome tuners, chrome box corners. Next question was red, orange, yellow, blue, or purple? The answer was blue. You're going to see that showing up all over the place. Plain wood or painted wood? Plain wood all the way. Someone singing into a can or somebody singing into a microphone. Somebody singing into a microphone. Well, guess what? You're going to get both with dual pickups. Coin, 2003. Check. With all the wood, color, and trim options out of the way, let's talk about the theme. The person I'm making the guitar for is a pilot, and um, we finally settled on uh, the P-51 Mustang, which is a fighter plane from World War II. It came into uh, action later in the war, and it's kind of funny. They ended up using the 12-cylinder uh, Allison engines out of these things in speed boats, and when I was running cranes in Vegas, I got called to uh, uh, Bally's one time to actually pick up a motor uh, out of one of these planes and set it in a speedboat. Small world. So anyway, sooner or later we settled on uh, this graphic. Uh, John actually sent me uh, a copy of this postcard. So this is what's going to be on the body and on the back of the body of the guitar. Now it came to the neck. I went ahead and got on eBay and and found uh, some matchbooks that go along with the theme. Uh, we've got World War II vintage aircraft stuff and uh, uh, air bases and United States Air Force stuff. And then, of course, being American and being, we can't uh, let something go over to Australia without Roswell Army Flying School. We all know what <laughs> that means in the United States, and we'll let the Aussies learn about what happens at Roswell, New Mexico. So we're going to find a way to put that on there as well. Now when we come to the headstock and theme in that, uh, every once in a while I'll do one where I use postage stamps like um, this is a stomp box I made uh, pretty handy. It's got a bunch of postage stamps on it and a Montana uh, license plate for a motorcycle or a trailer. And you got a couple of uh, door handles out of uh, a kitchen uh, cabinets and this has a piezo in it so it just sits like this and you can tap your foot on or do whatever you want so this was kind of uh, gave me the idea that I should get on the internet through a stamp collector and, and try to find out what was available for p51 stamps and what do you know I found quite a few and then I turned those into this graphic for the headstock so that's what the headstock will look like so this is kind of what the body uh, neck and headstock will look like and and how I theme that now since the neck is going to be covered with uh, matchbooks we need to put some fret markers in so uh, I did what I usually do uh, we take a bit we drill uh, down in to where it flaps like that and I take a golf tee stick it in there mark it and come up with the size I need I'm gonna put that in there and we're going to use some of our blue paint to mark that so it, it, it has a nice uh, contrast to the wood there and we get to use some of the blue in our theming there we go we'll just put a little bit of blue on top of there like that these have been worked and sanded flat already we'll let that dry in place pull it out put our glue in there and level them down to the side of the fingerboard all right that nickel uh that 2003 nickel that'll go right and epoxy in right there and of course that's going to be under the the 12th fret so when you're 
fingers are sliding down you know when you hit the 12th fret that's a magic number for uh, the mat the magic fret for blues players there we go a little wood colored epoxy these wood colored because we can sand it later I'm gonna drop that in right there let it sit or 2003 nickel of course I'm going to clean that up and I can use lacquer thinner to touch that up and then when it dries I can sand it as necessary. Now the nickel in place and the frat markers in place on the side of the fingerboard before we can finish the bottom of the neck by putting a coat of protection on it we're going to put the pilot holes in for the screws on the chrome tuners. There we go, we've got the pilot holes drilled. We can put our coat of lacquer on here and then once that's all dried, we'll flip this over and do our graphic on our neck and matchbook the fingerboard. Now I've shown you this, this is made out of a, a uh, graphic scan of some postage stamps from all over the world. We're going to put uh, our coat of Mod Podge on the neck and we've got all of the coating on the underside of the neck and along the sides and we got to do this part before we put our fingerboard on or our matchbooks on the fingerboard. Excuse me. We just take this line it up it's been cut where there's a little bit of overlap like so and then we'll trim that as necessary there we go we'll let that dry on to the headstock uh, do our cutouts for our tuner holes and uh, retainers and then we will top coat it and let that dry but that's what the headstock is going to look like next we'll be putting the matchbooks on the fingerboard so putting the matchbooks on the fingerboard we fretted everything uh, i've digitized these matchbooks um, again the video graphics uh, shows you how to do that there's a link there on the right for that um, and then you just basically take uh, these uh, you figure out where you want to start, you figure out where the uh, fret uh, begins right there, you put a little mark there, and you take it to your paper cutter. Okay, once I pull these out of paper, then what I do is I just put a little bit of this decoupage stuff on here, slip this off the paper like this, put it like that, and then leave it sit till it dries, and then we just put the next one in the water and do the same thing okay there we go they're lined up we'll let those dry i'll coat the top of those and we'll cut these and march down the fingerboard all right we've got the neck ready we've got the holes cut in uh we've got the tail piece section ready to be uh the tension pins put in uh and i've got the graphic attached to uh the box lid and um now it's just a matter of making sure that every place where the holes are for the bridge, for the potentiometers, uh, and for the neck bolts, and for the sound holes, that everything lines up good. And then we're going to put a couple more coats on this. Remember, I've got uh, a video out there called uh, Graphics that will go through this step by step, but that's what the top of the box is going to look like. All right, so we've put the last of the matchbooks on the neck. Uh, we'll let those dry uh, and then put a final coat of protectant over them but that's what it looks like well, we've got the graphic on the top of the box and uh, that's a nice graphic but you can't see everything because of uh, the different things that go on here the coil or the pickup and the bolts and and uh, the volume controls so on the back side you've got the same thing and the only thing in the way here is the bolts that go through to keep the box closed but uh, you've got a good look at the graphic 
So we're putting a hole here at the front of the box on the same side as the hinges on the top uh, side and one here as well for the end pin for our guitar strap. And there's the second one and we will uh, put these on now. I want you to notice that when I put these end pins on for the guitar strap, the way I drill these is just off the equidistant off the top of the box, top of the bottom of the box, the lid goes up here of course, and the edge, and it's just enough for this wing nut to go on there but not to turn. And the reason we do that is because when we tighten these up, that wing nut is up against the side of the box so it can't come undone and, and it, it saves a lot of problems later. You never have this loosening up. There's really no reason to take this off so I mean if you wanted to put a tad bit of blue Loctite on there that might be a good idea as well and then we'll put another one in right here. And there's that front hole for the grease zerk. All right, there it is. It's our trademark grease zerk. For what? That's right, absolutely nothing. Carrying on with the trim, we're gonna put the chrome box corners in using our uh, pre-drilled holes. Chrome box corners on. Okay, we're gonna do the tuners now, and I'm gonna put a tad bit of my Duco cement in here not too much but just a tad and then I'm going to put my retainer in there that way the retainer doesn't pop out I just tap it in there there's three and four okay you'll remember before we finish the neck uh, we uh, pre-drilled our holes for our tuner uh, mounting screws and um, had Tammy sign it, then we coated it. Now I'm gonna run these in with this nut driver. You always wanna make sure that your clutch is set really low before you start driving these in. You certainly do not wanna twist these off. That makes for a nightmare. There we go, there's number four. I'm gonna take a, a small uh, driver and make sure those are good. Um, I like these tuners. They look good and I think the front end of that looks pretty good too with the headstock and the chrome tuners. Now for the nut on this guitar I'm going to use uh, one of these bolts with the brass lamp hardware and I'm just going to set it on there like this. I really want to watch how I adjust this so this isn't sticking out too far to snag anything because this will be the side that's down. This will be the side that's up. And then I just can just tighten that up there, adjust this the way I like a um, little bit this way. Um, and then, of course, later when I set the strings up, I'm going to do some measuring and make sure that my strings are here. And then I'll cut some grooves in this with a file. I did a, a video about uh, a knot, a bone knot, or using one of these and how to cut the grooves in there so the strings stay, but that's what you know, that's going to look like on this guitar, and I think that's a pretty good look. Now, recently I did an episode about uh, how to bolt the, the neck uh, to the top of the box, and I was talking there about how uh, it's pretty simple. If you need to do some work on your coil, to unbolt the top of the neck from the box or maybe you just get tired of this you want to change it or something like that but I want to show you this uh, coil pickup if I do this see it's not going to fit down in there so if I ever have to do any work like this before I bolt down this there's a couple of things I want to think about here um, I'm going to put that in there like that and then put the top on also um, I'm going to put my piezo right under the bridge here you've seen that in an in a episode called uh, wiring a piezo uh, and then that'll sit here underneath here so it's really easy to um, unbolt that and now I'm going to put the chrome piece on there and that will hold there okay there we go we got the coil on I can adjust it here um, 
and I haven't attached this all yet, but in the event that I needed to work on this or, or take it off or do some wiring or something, I just pick this off and it unbolts from the neck and that's really handy. So once I get, uh, I've got this on now, I'll put my piezo on underneath here and then I'll start putting the bolts in and, and wiring everything up. But I, I think that's a clean look and it works well for me. All right, bottom of the tailpiece is done. Just gonna tighten up these covers here. Now we're getting down to the end. There's a lot of little details that you got to go over and make sure that everything's tight. Tail pieces, box corners, just everything like that. Anyway, that's the tail piece. The strings will go down through here. And we got a video on that. They come up through here and go over the bridge. Okay, now we're going to start getting down into the part where things live and breathe. Um, We've got the coil pickup on. We've got that mounted with the wiring here. We know where our bridge is from these screws right here. And on the lighter side of the strings, the big bass string is over here, the lighter side of the string. I'm going to want to put my piezo right under the bridge right there. So I'm going to take the Forstner bit uh, and, and drill down a little inset. So this will fit right about here uh, and then we can glue gun it down and then our wires will run to our uh, potentiometer here and then we'll start wiring all this up all right let's get a little bit of glue from a hot glue gun there to get this seated where it needs to be and the wires right there and we'll let that dry and then we'll just coat the whole thing in right up to here. Okay, there we go. And we're going to make sure that that's nice and flush. The neck is going to go right here. Wherever that crosses over, if it's a tad high, we're going to let this uh, set up. And then we can always take a flat razor knife and, and cut this away as necessary. But there's the piezo. Okay, the soldering iron is heating up over here. I've got uh, two long uh, shaft 500K three lug potentiometers are gonna be my volume controls. I'll put those right here and then we're gonna wire all this up into the jacks which are there. Now up on the uh, right top there, you're gonna see a couple I cards pop up that tell you uh, about the videos about how to wire a coil and a piezo. Uh, and click on those if you need to. Okay, we're getting the final things done here. We're getting the uh, grounding wires in from uh, the tailpiece. Got the copper underneath there. We're about ready to put the strings on. And we'll make sure that our neck uh, nuts and bolts are tight. Again, these uh, nuts have nylon inserts. Uh, remember from uh, the coil, how to wire a coil uh, video, we also use nylon inserts on these. I do put a tad bit of Loctite. These don't do anything other than to stop this uh, bolt from backing out all the way over time. And over here, you see this? All the secrets of the universe are underneath this tape. And unless you have this guitar, uh, sorry, I guess you're just out. One of the last things I like to do before I seal this up is come in with a little bit of wire and go around the harness going to the pickups over there. Just keeps everything together. So just short pieces of, of wire that I have left over. And that way, this isn't all getting hung up when you're opening and closing the box later. Everything stays nice, just like that. So now we'll just close it up. There we go. And it's ready for strings. I'll get those on, give you a little buzz by of it. All done. 
sticking with the blue theme uh, this thing has a coil it's right there uh, so the hot volume control is going to be blue again going on with the theme I want to make sure that we put that on the zero is all the way down and then we turn it goes up so we pop that one it also has a piezo that you can't see under the bridge right over here that's the dull color so we're going to use uh, this dull gray again turn it all the way to the right so it's down we pop that one on there like that there we go okay i'm stringing it up and as usual i'm going to put a heavier string up on the top here on this right hand guitar and i'm using this bolt uh for a knot uh it's got the lighting hardware with brass hardware nice touch but uh, once this gets where it's going the person's comfortable with this i've cut some grooves in underneath here uh, they can just turn this over uh, if they like that spacing if not you can roll this a little bit this way and then cut grooves in i usually come in about five or seven millimeters from each end and then space the strings evenly but there's our first string okay strings are on time to do the secret tuning There it is. Perfect. Alrighty, we're done. Before I give it a little strum and send it on its way, let's do a flyby. Uh, first off, I'm going to go ahead and package up all the stuff that I used, all these original Mac matchbooks and, and uh, stamps and stuff that I use. We're going to put those in the guitar and send them off to Australia with the guitar. Uh, but let's do a quick flyby here. Uh, there is the neck. I'm happy with the way that turned out. Uh, we've got some themed matchbooks. I like that postcard there. We've got our two pickups. Coil, piezo, and our strap. Flip it over. There's our chrome tuners. Tammy's signature, of course. We got the coin. Oh, look at there's our grease or of course the other pin strap. And full graphic on the back. There we go. Now let's hook it up to an app and see what it does. Thank you. 